Uh, my name is Jared here at Archon and I drive a 1994 Ford Bronco. Um, basically, I got a uh, 1997 F-150 from my grandparents that had been rolled on its side and so I got it for super cheap and that's kind of how I got started building. Like, I, I started looking at wheels and one of my buddies told me about custom offsets and that's when I kind of started like looking into wheels and like, look at these, look at those, all the different sizes, styles and designs and that's kind of when I realized that you can do a lot with a vehicle and you can kind of customize it and make it your own wheels and vinyl and plastic i've been doing all these like custom things with vehicle was its own like art form almost a way of expressing yourself a way of designing something that'll be like your own and that kind of really like stuck with me and it's been something that every vehicle i've had ever since I've, I've done and i've customized and i've done stuff too because it's your own it's your baby make it look like what you want it's an experience that like you can make a lot of memories with so i've done a lot with like my dad, he helped me a lot with my F-150. That was the big one that like we worked on together because I had all these ideas and things I wanted to do, but like I needed an extra set of hands or I needed help with this or that and I didn't know how to do that. And there's a lot of memories there and I feel like that's something super special too, that it's like time to spend with friends or family. Vehicles bring so many people together. You can look at car and truck shows even and see all the people that come together and enjoy the same type of thing. And I think that's just super cool and unique and being able to take your story and bring that to those shows then and all of your memories with it that's just that's a, a big deal I think it's something that a lot of people take for granted or don't really appreciate or know about is that like there's a lot behind a build there's a lot behind a story and it's cool to be able to share that with people when you go to meets and shows and stuff and be able to talk to them and like share your experiences. As far as people have influenced me I wouldn't say that anyone's like influenced me with a build I've had a lot of inspiration from like just seeing vehicles online and stuff. Obviously, like I've had help from my dad and from friends with a lot of my vehicles. It's one of those things where I, I'll, I'll have an idea or I'll see something and be like, oh, this part of this build would be cool on what I'm trying to do. Or this style would be something twisted this way to look good on here. So I guess the internet is one of the big ones. It's not that you look at the internet and take something and say, I want something exactly like that. You'll see something and be like, you know what's cool, what's not cool, you know what to make unique and different and that's that's really what I wanted to do with this build I guess is the reason I decided to build a Bronco was because I wanted something different. You see the normal pickup trucks that are lifted rolling down the road every single day and I've had multiple of them and that's not something that I wanted to build again. I really wanted something that stood out and honestly I kind of wanted something that made people mad at the same time. I feel like a Bronco is something that a lot of people have had in their lives or like their parents have had or something like that. There's a lot of people who can relate to it. When I first bought this thing, it kind of blew my mind how many people here at the shop saw that and were like, oh dude, my dad had a Bronco. That was my favorite truck. There's a lot behind the Bronco platform and Ford itself that I wouldn't even call myself really a Ford um, like guy, but like this, this build and this body style is just very like classic iconic, I would say. Um, and it was really something that I wanted to do to kind of stand out. I, I wanted to take a truck that people would use and go like trail riding with because it was it was meant for that. You know, the, the truck was meant to do some off-roading and make it a pavement princess. I wanted to take it and squat it because you don't see squat up here in the northern states in Wisconsin where we are. Um, I wanted to put 24s on it and 35s because I wanted a lot of wheel. I didn't want much tire. Um, I wanted it to be a real show build, really showy, flashy. Um, kind of obnoxious and make people mad but at the same time kind of give them that connection so they can say you know what I don't like your truck but I appreciate what you did to it and that's the big thing I think that a lot of people can take away from everyone's builds is it's like it's not my style but I see what you put into it and I like it and that's that's the game right there so my passion it, it started like I said with my 97 f-150 and really that was just a really like a budget build so I was in high school I think I was a sophomore um, I got a spindle lift from Rough Country, which it was a two-wheel drive truck. So it, it brought the front up two and a half or three and a half inches. And that was like a $300 piece. I got that, me and my dad installed it in the driveway. I did all of it like in my garage. That's why my dad helped me a lot with it because it was stuff that I hadn't done before. And like, that's where it all started. It was really a, a driveway build that took a lot of ideas and things that I thought were cool and brought them together into one thing. And that, that's where it all really kicked off. On my truck that I have now, it's a 1994 Ford Bronco. It was kind of an impulse buy. I saw it online. 
saw that it was what I thought was in a lot better condition than it ended up being in. Um, anyways, uh, went down to Milwaukee, picked this thing up, drove it back home, and then it sat for a year. I knew what I wanted. I wanted like an older body style SUV, either like a K5 Blazer or a Ford Bronco. I, I basically waited until like, I had all my ducks in a row. Um, I knew Archon was going to be coming out with some wheels. Um, obviously I knew the styles kind of behind the scenes and everything like that. Um, knew what I wanted to do with the build and finally uh, when I pulled the trigger everything was just there and ready to go. So I went with the 24 by 14 Archon Lincolns in the chrome finish obviously. This wheel I feel like on this truck especially it's just like a classic um, timeless design as far as the wheel goes that you can put it on an old truck or a new truck and I think that's the beauty of it. I have it on my 1994 Bronco. Sean's got in his 2015 Chevy Silverado uh, 2500 Gasser, and they're two different builds, but the wheel looks good on both of them, and so it's one of those things that I knew as soon as I saw it that it was going to be the wheel for this truck and just look good. Uh, for tires, I went with a 35 by 13 and a half amp MTs. I honestly feel like this is one of the most underrated tires that are out there right now. Um, a lot of people go with like the Furies and stuff like that because they're wide their size is meant for the bigger diameter wheels and stuff like that but a lot of people don't realize that like amp as one of like the more affordable options also has a good looking tire that has the sizes that are needed so this 13 and a half wide on my 14 wides is almost perfectly straight up and down um, sidewall which is perfect so I, I was super happy with them um, drove this thing immediately to Daytona the second it was pretty much done I put probably eight to ten thousand miles on this truck this summer alone and um, buying a 25 year old vehicle, I wasn't sure what to expect, I guess. And as far as like the fit goes, running with a 24 and a 35, this definitely glad I went with them. I went with the Superlift Radius Arm six inch kit as well. However, the rear is not six inches. Um, it comes with a four inch block in the rear. That's what normal six inch lift kits do. I swapped it up for a two inch block in the rear. So people say that like I didn't have the money to afford my lift kit in the rear and stuff like that, but I actually paid more money to get a smaller block in the rear just to make people angry. It's kind of confusing. Um, but then in the front, it's got the radius arms and the springs that are all powder coated anodized blue. Um, that was a whole process and a half in itself to get that done. But now that it's done, I'm super happy um, with it. I wanted to go with like an anodized color because underneath the truck, it's a lot of, it's dark. There's a lot of shadows and stuff like that. And having a color like that, that just really reflects and bounces off. Um, it's something that when you're at shows and stuff like that, um, you'll notice and it kind of pops in photos and stuff like that, it's kind of hard to get it to shine through, but when you see it in person, you can really appreciate like the candy blue color that it is. I've also got a 2019 F350 front bumper on this thing. Um, the brackets, everyone's been asking me for them. I literally just Googled it. There weren't many people when I first started, uh, first looked into this and found it. There was probably two trucks on the internet that I could find that were running the 17 plus bumpers, so I knew it was possible. Um, I just couldn't find many others doing it, which was cool. Um, now a lot more people are catching on that you can do it and it all it takes is a bracket to do that. And now it's on video so all of you can go do it too. But um, that's probably one of my favorite parts about this truck is taking that bumper. There's definitely a lot of opportunity for me to take this thing to the next level by taking some of those newer items and retrofitting them with this as well. I also added spacers. I was going to just do um, two inch in the rear to kind of even it out all the way around but I decided to put spacers in all four corners so I went with three inch in the rear and two inch in the front just even up the track with front and rear and then also kind of just widen it up all the way around. I also added a eight piece RGBW black label lighting rock light kit. Um, a lot of times at night, all black truck can't really see it. Um, you can definitely see it now with that kit. I mean, it shines like crazy. Absolutely love it. Last thing I got, which was literally the night before we left for Daytona was a tint. Uh, so I've got 35% on my front windshield and then 5% completely around the whole truck. All around, I just went for a completely murdered out look. I just wanted it to look really dark, really black. Obviously black truck, black windows. Um, I can still see fine at night if people ask me about that. I don't really have any issues even with my crappy 1994 headlights. So I'm happy with it. So there's, there's definitely a lot I still want to do to this truck, but it's probably not going to be this truck. So throughout building it and throughout driving it, I mean, we went to so many shows this year, basically all across the country going north, south, in our section of the country. Um, I put about eight to 10,000 miles on this thing. Um, you're starting to see some body sag, unfortunately. This thing's starting to rot out. So future plans, I'm kind of looking to find another uh, chassis, a rolling chassis. The, this truck's got really low miles for the year and everything like that. So I'm really just trying to find a chassis to take and then put motor trans into, take my interior, put it in there. And then also looking to branch off of that and look at custom interior options, whether it be 
retrofitting a newer power stroke interior like I talked about or a King Ranch or something like that. Um, definitely gonna do air ride in the rear too so that I can air it up so that it rides level. And then when I wanna air out and squat for the haters, I can do that as well. So the big thing is gonna be finding a new body for this bad boy and getting everything swapped over and getting a build that is structurally sound and looks good because right now it's neither. <laughs> the biggest setback during the build, um, I'm not going to act like I built this thing. I forced Cody Banker to. Um, he's our local shop tech. So I can't say that I have personally like, oh yeah, this was really hard for me. Um, the biggest setback for me was powder coat. There's a lot of miscommunication issues. But as far as the build goes, she rusty. Uh, Cody Banker had a hell of a time working on this thing. Um, there was a whole mountain of rust under it as I was sitting on the uh, lift. And that's just one of the things that I've come to accept with it. I bought it for a good enough price that I wasn't too mad by all the rust. Um, we got everything installed, got it all like locked down and secured so it was safe to drive to Daytona and to Missouri and to Kentucky and to Chicago and all these places and back. Um, and I've had no issues. But that was the biggest setback definitely is the, the install time took like three or four times longer than it should have just because of the fact that this thing has got 25 years of rust caked on it. And that's unfortunately one of the mistakes that I made that I'm gonna learn from in the future is I'll be going down south next time for sure. Uh, biggest like club and group down part of his team stance. Um, that's the big one. We go to a couple shows together every year. The big one that we went to this year was um, Kentucky. We went there for the union, which is basically we get all of the team stance guys we can together from all across the country. We have people just coming from all over the country come together, and it's just a really cool meet. You see everybody come together, hang out. It's always a good time with all the team stance guys coming together. It's basically like a family reunion once a year where you get all of your truck buddies together and go to a show together, you show out together, go out to eat, and it's always a good time with them, their family. I think a lot of people think you have to go to school or something like that to like know how to build a truck. And I, I would say no, honestly. A lot of it's come through experience. I've had previous builds where I've done all of it myself or almost all of it or had help from my dad or friends and things like that. And it's just get your hands into it and start doing stuff, you know? Like start turning around, seeing what works with what and what you can do yourself and branch off of that. Um, a lot of times like the experience You'll know what to do for next time, what not to do for next time, what worked well, what look you want to go for. Just just get your hands dirty and get into it is my biggest thing I think that you can take away from it is just just do it, you know? Because it's it's one of those things where you get you get into it, you do tint, and then all of a sudden you're adding some vinyl and then you're getting new wheels and it's an addiction. You're just spending loads and loads of money on it and it, it becomes one of those things where it becomes a passion and a hobby and pretty soon you want it to be your job because it's one of those things that you just want to be surrounded by every single day and I think that's the coolest thing about it.